How's it going guys? This is Jesse Escalante with Design Your Lifestyle Online and we are here with our daily reading. We read every single day for about 10 to 15 minutes on a daily basis about a specific topic. Today's topic is living with enthusiasm. Um, it says here, live your best life now and, and with enthusiasm and be as excited about life about the life that God has given you. So be excited every single day about your life and live every single day to your full potential. So make sure that you live with a lot of enthusiasm, happiness, no matter what is in your way, no matter all the difficulties, you always have to see the bright side out of everything. Adiyinka, nice to see you. Thank you. Thanks for stopping by. I really appreciate it. So I hope you guys enjoy this topic. Remember, we do this on a daily basis. Um, if you haven't subscribed to my YouTube channel, make sure to do that. I have the link below. We post every single uh, video that we post here on Facebook. We also put, we post all our videos on my Facebook page, on our Design Your Lifestyle page, and we also post them in our YouTube channel. So make sure that you guys subscribe because I also have some other content that I'm sure you guys would enjoy. So without further ado, guys, let's get started with every single uh, every single, I don't know why I said that. Let's start with this chapter, which happens to be the last chapter of Your Best Life Now by Joel Osteen. After this, guys, we will be reading another book. And if you guys have any book recommendations, please make sure to send them my way. And I'd love to get the book and I'd love to read it for you guys um, on a daily basis. So let's get started, guys. I hope you guys enjoy this topic with uh, named Living with Enthusiasm. Hope you guys enjoy a woman shopping in Houston happily hummed a tune as she collected the items she wished to purchase and approached the cashier to pay. The clerk noticed the shopper's effervescent personality just stared at the shopper for a long moment as though she was wondering what was wrong with her. Still eyeing her somewhat curiously, curiously the clerk finally offered an oblig obligatory, How are you doing today? That's all it took. The enthusiastic woman nearly bubbled over. How nice of you to ask. I am doing great. I am so blessed. I'm excited about this day. The clerk looked at the woman quizzically for a moment and then said, Let me ask you a question. Do you go to Lakewood? Why, yes, I do, the shopper said. How did you guess? The clerk shook her head and smiled. I should have known. Everybody that comes in here like you is from Lakewood. God's people should be the happiest people on earth. When I first heard that story, I chuckled, but then I thought, what a great compliment. That's the way it should be. God's people should be the happiest people on earth. So happy, in fact, that other people notice. Why? Because we not only have a fabulous future, we can enjoy life today. That's what life, well, that's what living your best life now is all about. Living with enthusiasm. Living your best life now is living with enthusiasm and being excited about life, the life that God has given you. It is believing for good things in the days ahead, but it's also living in the moment and enjoying it to the hilt. Let's not be naive. The pressures of modern life constantly threaten to take a toll on, your, on our enthusiasm, causing it to quickly evaporate if it's not continually replenished. You probably know some people who have lost their passion, they've lost their zest for life. Once they were excited about the future, they were excited about their dreams, but they've lost their fire. Perhaps even in your own life, you've seen evidence of dwelling enthusiasm. Maybe at one point you were excited about your marriage, you were deeply in love, so full of passion, but now your marriage has become stale and stagnant. Or maybe you were excited about your job, you loved going to work, but recently it's become dull, routine, and boring. Maybe at one point you were excited about serving God, you couldn't wait to get to church, you loved reading your Bible, praying, and spending time with your fellow believers. But, rare, but lately you've been thinking, I don't know what's wrong with me, I don't have any drive, I don't have any passion, I'm just going through the motions. The truth is, much of life is routine and we can become stagnant if we're not careful. We need to stir ourselves up to replenish our supply of God's good gifts on a daily basis. Like the Israeli people in the wilderness who have, who have to gather God's mirac miraculous provisions of, um, sorry, of manna afresh each morning, we too cannot get by on yesterday's supply. We need fresh enthusiasm every single day. The word enthusiasm derives from the Greek words 
entheos, meaning inspired by God. Our lives need to be inspired, infused, filled afresh with God's goodness every day. Make a decision that you are not going to live another day without the joy of the Lord in your life. Without love, peace, and passion. Without being excited about your life. And understand that you don't have to have something extraordinary happening in your life to be excited. You may not live the life, you may not live in the perfect environment or have the perfect job or the perfect marriage, but you can still choose to live each day um, with enthusiasm. The scripture says, never lag in zeal, but be aglow and on the fi- and on fire, serving the Lord enthusiastically. Do those terms do those terms describe your life? Are you aglow with God's presence in your life? Are you on fire with enthusiasm? You can be. When you awaken in the morning, do do you get up with passion to meet the day? Are you excited about your dreams? Do you go to work each day with enthusiasm? Well, I don't really like my job, Darlene complains. I can't stand driving in traffic. I don't like the people I work around that that I work around with. If that sounds familiar, you need to change your attitude. You should be grateful that you have you even have a job. You need to appreciate that to and stay excited about the opportunities God has given you. Wherever you are in life, make the most of it and be the best that you can be. If you're if you're in it, if you're in it with enthusiasm, um, if you're assigned right now is to if your assignment right now is to raise your children, do it with passion, do it with enthusiasm. Don't get up and say, "Huh, my friends are just doing something significant, something important, something exciting. All I'm doing is taking care of these kids." A mother's work is one of the most important jobs in the whole world, but you have to keep your enthusiasm. You may not have somebody patting you on the back or cheering you on. Your day may not be filled with extraordinary events. These are diapers to change, children to feed, clothes to be washed and pressed, housework that needs to be done, routine mundane, mundane chores that seem to start over the, start over the moment you complete them. But in the midst of the ordinary, you can choose to have an extraordinary attitude towards your work. The scripture tells us to do everything we do with our whole hearts, to never lag in zeal. If you work outside your home, don't give your employer a half-hearted effort. Don't dwaddle on the telephone wasting your employer's time and money. If you are digging a ditch, don't don't spend half the day leaning on your shovel. Do your work with excellence and with enthusiasm. Well, they don't pay me enough. Anyway, I, should have, I shouldn't have to work this hard. You won't be blessed with that kind of attitude. God wants you to give it everything you've got. Be enthusiastic. Set an example. We should be, ex- we should be so excited and so full of joy that other people will want, will want what we have. Ask yourself, is the way I'm living attractive and contagious? Well, my attitudes, the work, the words I speak, my expressions, the way I handle challenges and setbacks cause anybody to want what I have. In other words, are you drawing people to God because of your joy, your friendliness, your enthusiasm, your attitude or faith? Or do you alienate people, turning them away because you're perpetually negative, discouraged, caustic and cynical? Nobody enjoys being around a person like that. If you want to point people to God or simply to do a better way of to have a better way of living, have some enthusiasm and be excited about life. I love the fictitious story of Tom Sawyer. As a young boy, Tom was Tom was told he can go outside and paint the fence. Well, Tom didn't feel like working. He wanted to go play with his friends. But instead of getting all negative and sour, he decided he was going to make the best of that situation. He went out and started painting the fence with enthusiasm and excitement, as though he were enjoying it. His friends came around, and when they saw how much fun Tom was having, they became envious of him. They said, hey, Tom, would you let us try painting that fence? Oh, no, Tom said, this is my fence. This is my project. You could never do what I'm doing. He played it up real big, and you know the story. When it was all said and done, Tom Sawyer was sitting back watching his friends do all the work simply because he approached his chore with excitement and enthusiasm. Who knows what would happen if each of us lived with more excitement in your in our eyes, with our hearts full of passion, our face filled with enthusiasm, instead of dragging around complaining that you don't want to mow the lawn, put a smile on your face, a spring in your step, start acting as if you're enjoying it. 
maybe somebody will come along to help. If not, at least you will you will feel better about your work. You'll have more energy and you will get the job done quicker. You will be amazed at how God will pour out his favor and how the breaks will start coming your way when you start living your enthusiasm. Start living with enthusiasm. Employers prefer employees who are excited about working at their companies. Your boss is much more likely to give you a raise in uh, in pay or a promotion if you have a good attitude and are excited about working than if you just show up and do your work in a perfunctu perfunctory manner. In fact, studies show that enthusiastic people often get promoted over other people who are actually more qualified. The upbeat person is promoted simply because he or she has a good attitude hope you guys are enjoying this guys if you guys are watching the replay make sure to put hashtag replay uh, give me a quick little smiley face or a quick thumbs up i really appreciate every single one of you guys and i love to answer to every single one of your comments so thanks for stopping by guys learn to be more than obedient learn to be willing one of the main reasons that we lose our enthusiasm in life is because we become ungrateful we take for granted what God has done for us. We let what once was a miracle become common to us. We get so accustomed to His goodness, it becomes routine. It doesn't really excite us anymore. I heard somebody say, don't let your miracles become monuments. A monument is a piece of wood or stone that, is, that reminds us of something that once was alive, vibrant and exciting. Maybe you used to be excited about the home that God helped you to buy, but now you've grown accustomed to it. You forgot to be grateful for it. You're not excited about it anymore. That's old news. Maybe you were once excited about the person God supernaturally brought into your life as a marriage partner. But now all the excitement was worn off. Don't allow that sense of miracle to slip away. Don't get so familiar with each other that you take one another for granted. During the first year of Victoria, that Victoria and I dated, we were on a cloud nine. We laughed. We had fun. We didn't need to to do extravagant or expensive things for entertainment. We were happy doing ordinary things. We were in love. We were excited. So everything so everything we did was exciting as far as we were concerned. One of our one of our first dates I picked her up a bit early, so we had a few minutes to spare. As we were driving down the highway, Victoria said, "Joel, let's pull into that new office building over there and take a look at the lobby. I've heard that it is incredibly beautiful." Now, normally I would think, why do I want to go into a building and look at a lobby? I can think of much more exciting things to do. But no, I was with Victoria. As long as she was there, it didn't matter. I would have gone and looked around a power plant as long as we were together. If you are married, you probably felt the same way about your spouse. You were head over heels for that person. You knew God brought you together. But too often as time goes by, we take for granted what God has done for us. We get up in the morning and say, well, that's just my wife or husband. No big deal. Sorry, honey. I don't have time to give you a hug. I'm in a hurry. I don't have time to do anything fun tonight. I, uh, I might miss my favorite TV show or the ball game. What we, once regarded as, what we once regarded as a miracle has now become a commonplace. We've grown cool to it. We take, we take what we have for granted. But the good news is that fire can be rekindled. Is your in your marriage, in your career, in your personal relationships, in your life. If you will initiate the changes you've learned about this book, the excitement will come back. Rekindle that fire. Don't let life, uh, don't take life for granted. Don't take for granted the greatest gift of all that God has given you, Himself. Don't allow your relationship with Him to become stale or your appreciation for His goodness to become common. Get get your fire back fan the flame more than ever live with enthusiasm whatever you do do it for him with your whole heart friend god doesn't want you to drag through life defeated and depressed no matter what you've been through no matter whose fault it was no matter how impossible your situation may look the good news is that god wants you to turn turn it around and restore everything that he has been uh, that he that has been stolen from you. He wants to restore your marriage, your family, your career. He wants to restore those broken dreams. He wants to restore your joy and give you a peace and happiness that you've never known before. Most of all, He wants to restore your relationship with Him. God wants you to live a satisfied life. 
God doesn't want you to simply feel a little better for a few days as you read this book. No, God is in the long-term restoration business. And this is the last little part. He wants you to have a life filled with abundance and of joy, an abundance of happiness. God doesn't want you to simply survive that marriage. God wants you to turn it around and restore you, restore you with a strong, healthy, rewarding relationship. God doesn't want your business to merely make it through the murky economic waters. He wants your business to sail and to excel. When you're when God restores, he always brings out brings you out better, improved, increased and multiplied. He has the vision of total victory for your life. Hold on to that new and large vision of victory and God has that God has given to you. Start expecting things to change in your favor. Dare to boldly declare that you are standing strong against the forces of darkness. You will not settle for a life of mediocrity. Oh, got a little notification there. It's our faith that activates the power of God. Raise your level of expectancy. It's our faith that activates the power of God. Let's quit limiting Him with our small-minded thinking and start believing Him for the bigger and better things. Remember, if you obey God and you are willing to trust Him, you will have the best you will have the best this life has to offer and more. Make a decision that from this day forward, you are going to be excited about the life God has given you. If you will, enlarge your vision, develop a healthy self-image, discover the power of your thoughts and words, let go of the past, stand strong against opposition and adversity, adversary, adversity live to give, and choose to be happy. God will take you places you've never dreamed of and you will be living your best life now. And that officially concludes this book here. Um, I love this book, Your Best Life Now, Seven Steps to Living at Your Full Potential by Joel Osteen. Uh, we've also read his other book, which is Become a Better You. And tomorrow we will start reading a new book. Once again, if you guys have any book recommendations, please send them my way. I, re I would really appreciate it. I've gotten it from a couple of people and they're all amazing books. They're all amazing topics. Um, finishing that book, I think that um, I'd, like to, I'd like to say a couple words about it. Um, usually we just talk about specifically about the topic, but since we finished the entire book today, I think it's an important topic to talk about the, the impact that it has for my life and that it, the impact that it could do in your life as well. Um, those topics that we've talked about are all right on. Yesterday we talked about excellence and integrity. We've talked about choosing to be happy. We've talked about living to give. We have to continue to live. We continue to give and those things will be received to us tenfold. I could not imagine my life not reading anymore. I told myself a couple years ago, exactly about two years ago, that I would con that I would read on a daily basis. That lasted about one week. Uh, for many people, most of those things, starting a new workout regimen, reading, um, making uh, making better decisions with your body, making better decisions for work, making more money, being committed to a certain projects or certain thing. We all say that we're committed to it. It's like New Year's resolutions. We're committed to it. But after three weeks, I think the percentage was that there's about 80 to 90% of us have already failed by that time. Why? That's just the way statistics work. Nobody sticks to the plan. Nobody is willing to do all the work. And you notice that after a few weeks, after a few months, the work gets a little bit tougher, especially in the very beginning. But I promise you in those aspects that once you get through that, the rewards are incredible. And I've noticed that at least with fitness wise, for me, it's been one of the biggest things. Financially, it has been the most rewarding thing. It's just an amazing feeling when you actually get through because only one through one to five percent actually get that far. Nobody wants to do the work. Nobody wants to put in the effort. Everybody just wants everything easy. Everybody wants the six pack like this. It doesn't work that way. And I hope that every single one of you that sees this understands that nothing worth having will come easy. 
And I've learned that the hard way. I'll tell you that. I've learned that the hard way. Such a great phrase. I hope that you guys enjoyed that book. Tomorrow we will continue reading for another 10 to 15 minutes. And we'll talk about the topic like we just did right now. I enjoy every single one of your comments. Every single one of your kind messages. Really, really appreciate every single one of you. And every single one that you come on live. Or if once again, if you're watching the replay, Put hashtag replay. Let me know where you're watching. Let me know what your favorite chapter was. I really appreciate every single one of your comments. And I always reply back to every single one of you. Guys, thanks for watching once again. Tomorrow we will read a new book. And I hope that you guys are excited for it as as well uh, as much as I am excited to do it. Because I love doing this every day for inspiration, for motivation. And the only way to do that is with all these words of wisdom. And uh, I, I'm... I'm I couldn't be happier, guys. I couldn't be happier with what I do. And I hope that you guys are just as motivated to do everything that you want to do in life um, as much as I am. And it, it takes a little bit of work. But at the same time, even when you have the worst of days, it's making the best out of every single situation at all times. Guys, thanks for watching. This is Jessica Scalante from Design Your Lifestyle Online. And we will, we will read again tomorrow. Thanks again, guys. Good night.